In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A young woman is with child. At the moment, we as a nation are blaming the boats, not even the people on the boats, for um, the state of our lives. Time was we used to blame women with children, particularly if they were on their own, for the sake of our lives. It was much easier to blame somebody else, especially if one can isolate a particular group to persecute with the hope and view that in the end all be well. And we as a global community are persecuting a particular ethnicity at the moment. Would it be likewise to sorting everything out once they have been extinguished? Which is all very well if you're in the minority, if you're in the majority. But if you are in that minority that the wider community has decided they want to get rid of, then things are very tricky. Sometimes you might be in the majority, but the circumstance makes you excluded. You might have been one of those young women in a Roman Catholic, devout Roman Catholic community, at least on the surface, devout, and you're found to be pregnant potentially through no fault of your own. You are sent either to an asylum or to work house. The child might be taken from you and even sold. Is it your fault? Well, you'd be told it is. You'd be told that you were a sinner and you were going to go to hell, however many Hail Marys you said. How was it for the mother of our Lord? We might have a view that it was a lovely Sunday school tale and uh, there was a background music, not necessarily from a mobile phone, floating around while the story was being rehearsed and uh, the edges of the film were all sort of floaty and uh, fuzzy and an angel floated down and it was all sort of delightful and caring and this youngster suddenly found meaning and worth and value for her life. Or was she a broken, excluded, self-harming addicted young person who was so overwhelmed by social media and how ugly and uh, stupid she was and uh, how her uncle treated her and said that if she told anybody then there would be trouble and uh, he wouldn't buy her uh, any more uh, computer games or chocolates. They then find themselves pregnant. How does that make us feel? In our world, we as church have been asked, invited, compelled, told that we are to make a difference. And if you like, our tummies are big with that challenge and difficulty. Does the community we live in notice that? Are we being ostracised or persecuted? Do we feel encouraged, enabled, inspired because we carry that child? Or do we feel excluded? There are some of us perhaps that can't be where, we might, where our families might want us to be because it's Christmas and we've got a service to take here or there. It might be that because we are uh, Christians and we want to make Christmas something special for us and our faith, that we don't want to engage with some of the things that our family and friends might invite us to. Having one or three too many on an office party, getting involved with these secret sanctions to, to upset and exclude people rather than to join them along and make them feel worthy and accepted. Perhaps doing some deal and getting it done quickly and un, in an underhand way so that it's done before Christmas and get it out in the papers to let everybody know how well we've done. We might be part of a political party or some other organisation that wants to just sort of put their thumb over that particular element on the form or the agreement and uh, move on to the next, perhaps build a few hundred houses without actually working out where the sewerage is going to go. We as Christians might decide that we're not prepared to accept that because we feel we have a higher calling, a higher authority and we are answerable to someone other than our boss, our daughter, our dad or our uncle. The challenge of carrying a child is that it can be beautiful and awesome 
it can be upsetting and challenging. Seeing pictures of ultrasound, for those of us who have had children, might fill us with the recollection of the joy of that experience. But for those of us who haven't or can't, it might make us cross, angry, upset and feel unworthy. The having of a faith is similarly unhelpful perhaps. For some it's an inspiration and a joy, for others it's a challenge and makes people cross and violent. Towards the end of our Gospel reading we are told that Mary's relative, Mary is told as we are, Mary's relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. We may not feel we are particularly old. I think one of those things when we're young we think we're older than we are. I'm a big girl now, so the colleague, uh, daughter of a colleague of uh, my wife Liz, and she's that little. <laughs> Equivalent to my mother who's just put in a care home thinks she's been sent there to look after the old people. <laughs> what is our attitude about ourselves as a congregation, as of the church? It's really a common thing for me to be told, having only been here for the last few minutes, that our congregation is much bigger. Their congregation is much bigger before COVID. I was much stronger. I could smell. I could speak before I had COVID. People might tell me things were better then. So and so used to do this, that, and the other, and now they can't get out of their homes. These things are all very important. I'm not mocking them by setting them before us. But it's very easy, in the light of our reading, and thinking of Elizabeth, I'm too old to make a difference. Mary, yes, yeah, she might have a child, and there might be circumstances that might make that difficult for her. But you know, we're, we're past it now. The church is past it. Spirituality is dying. People aren't interested in their faith anymore. We can't get volunteers. And whatever our spirituality, whatever we understand of the all-powerful God that is God of love and wants to change as many lives as we will allow, even that aside, even if you are simply a church attender and all that supernatural stuff is over your pay scale or over your head, if you're part of an organisation that thinks it is going to die, it will. If you are part of an organisation that thinks it has a future, it will have one. And as long as I'm standing in front of you here dressed like a Christmas tree, I will tell you that you have a future, this building has a future, the community in which it finds itself has a future. What that future is, we don't know. The more we get involved in love, joy, hope, and integrity, and peace, the more we do, the more we say, the more we worship, the more we learn, the more we study, the more we are together with each other with our eyes and ears open, the better that future will be. The more that join us, the better that future will be for them and for our community. And if that's our hope and our joy, and if that's the child and the word we carry, and we will have a blessed Christmas when the Lord comes, now and in the future. Amen.